All right, we're back here. It's a brisk morning, but there's no wind again. We are getting super lucky uh, with the cold weather coming in without wind. Usually those two seem to come with each other, but we're gonna go ahead and get going on this back end wall, which first we gotta get our porch pier brackets installed so we can start building this porch. Once the framing is done, then we have it properly flashed, we can bring the steel up and over the corner. So that's gonna be the main goal today. Ooh, look at that. Brand new SDS inch and seven eighths DeWalt sent out. So of course we're gonna give it a try. Pretty much overkill. And then Bosch stopped over yesterday to the job site and brought out these demo bits here. Look at the tip on those. I was always a Bosch rotary hammer guy but uh, I don't own any Bosch rotary hammers, cordless. Mine are all corded, so look at this thing. Holy cow. Honestly, I don't have any review of this thing. I haven't even used it, as you can tell, but we're gonna. Oh, it's got a soft ramp up, adjustable speed. Let's go dig some holes, Greg. So what I think I'm gonna like about this is that most of the time when you go ahead and start in with a rotor hammer, it bounces all over the place, but this has a really, has a slow startup and then it ramps up. So I'm hoping that that takes care of that. Honestly, I feel like very little to no vibration in my hand. of the tool do the whole job. I love those Simpson Titan HDs. Simpson, you want to sponsor me? Huh? <laughs> you know, it doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, it makes you proud. And what I'm talking about is when you pour all of your porch piers, come back in with a laser. And every one of them hits the mark. I always say if you spend time early and if you work at your layout when you put the site in, everything falls together much easier. And this is another one of those examples. We're gonna now be able to cut all three porch post piers, or porch post, exactly the same. I always try to get our cedar uh, S4S so it's sanded on all four sides. Almost always comes out of Boise Cascade there's a big supplier or a supply house really close to me and they've always got a really nice cedar product it's very clean it's not all cracked out six by six s4s cedar that's what we like to do our post and beam look on our building we think it sets it off real nice well I'm uh, I'm super disappointed because I forgot my favorite beam saw uh, you guys have seen me use it in the tools day videos I've used it for the last probably about a year now and that's the super sasquatch i forgot it at home i try not to keep it in the trailer because it is an expensive tool and i don't want it to get ruined or something set on it or you know get it off i guess uh i don't want to mess up the precision of it i've spent a lot of time getting it zeroed in and how i like it and i don't want it to get hit even though it sits in that sweet case um so i'm having to use my 10 inch chop saw and it requires me to be very careful and I have to cut halfway through, flip it over, get it precisely lined back up and then cut it again and it really sucks, especially when I have to cut my miters here that I'm gonna be cutting for the, uh, the header around the corners. I couldn't do it. I had to, Greg graciously, thank you Greg. Yes, awesome. Headed back to the shop, picked up the beam saw because as you can see, this is all I was able to do on one cut one side of the miter saw i couldn't even get down all the way so it's only a 10 inch and it just didn't have the depth you know so i'd rather use this anyway we just made the commitment i've got the post we just stood those up so now what we're going to do is we're going to cut 
the beams that go around. So we've got miters out on these two points over here. So that's that's the hardest part. You got to go in perfect. And this thing does a good job. What I ended up doing was I went ahead and took my receiver and I set it plumb and right at the top of this post, set it, and then I used it to transfer over to these marks here. And what that is, is if you look, that first line is the top of my post, which means that's where my header, the bottom of my header is gonna die in right here. And then this line, I snap five and a half inches up. That's the top. And that's where I'm gonna run a two by against the wall so I can support my ceiling. And my hip rafters and all that other good stuff is gonna be all based off of that line, which uh, will be the top of my header. So now we're able to, I'm gonna put a couple blocks just to temporarily mount the headers where they die into the, seat, the wall. And we'll get them all mounted up. So I spent time to figure out all my angles, calculations, figured out what my degrees were, where my purlins ended up on my rafters. I got them cut. I've got the locations marked out. Now everything I did was to center. So I've also got to always take into account for that. So like for this right here, the actual center line of my purlin is gonna look like that, going that way and from this way it'll be something like this, but you'll see that when I get up. But these are my two hips. What happened was Kyle made a little mistake, but it really is gonna be okay. Um, you can see how much bearing I got out here on my post in my corner column where Greg is. But what happened is these are 12 foot two by 12s and I needed 12 foot four inches. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put them up there and then I'm gonna cut, I've already cut a couple two by six blocks that I'm gonna laminate to each side that's gonna come out to help frame in my overhang. Now, I understand that's not, you know, perfect, but let's be real, uh, I'm not perfect. And so this is kind of like the fix on site. In a perfect world, I would have two by 12, 16 footers here that I cut down. When I did the initial math, I don't think I was thinking about the one foot overhang that I had to account for. And I typically do a purlin on top of my rafter, which means I don't need as long of a rafter because it's actually sunk down into the roof system. So I don't know if that really makes sense, but this is gonna be, um, the top of this two by 12 will be the top plane of my roof where I'm gonna put my uh, sheeting. And so with that being said, I ended up needing a little bit longer two by 12, uh, but I think it's gonna work. I'm anxious to put them up on the building and actually see if all of my math is correct because math never lies. The problem is you can do the wrong math and then it could be wrong. So uh, hopefully I didn't just waste a bunch of time. Now you can see what we've got going. So this was the end of that two by 12 that we actually ran short on and we've got it installed. We've got our other fascia done and basically what I've done is I've cut blocks with the appropriate angle. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slide them in, running them on the top of my header. But that's the beauty is math never lies. So we're gonna put this all together right where it's supposed to be. And because this is not a perfect 45 degree, since we've got different dimension so this dimension going back that way is eight feet but this is only seven foot um this is actually offset from where the corner of the porch is but that's only the hip is offset it will look 
it will look appropriate once we get it all done. I don't know if that makes sense. There we go, Greg. There we go. So is this how I wanted it? No, I really wanted this two by to plane all the way down. Um, perfect, but you know, we're not in a perfect world. Uh, but I think it turned out a lot better than I anticipated because anytime you do a lot of math and weird angles, you never quite know. All it takes is one mishap on the calculator to be off. I always like to just throw a bunch of GRK screws in here. And then I come back in with some uh, some 20 pennies, just for good measure. So what I've got to do now is cut these purlins. And these purlins, they're what's gonna go up here on the roof and are gonna frame in from this wall to this wall. And that's my framing that I'm gonna sheet. Kind of like the purlins that are up on the main roof. But what I've gotta do is they've got a compound angle. So as you can see here, they're pitched at a 412 to be planed in with the 412 pitch of my roof. But then on the end, they're also pitched at 46.87 degrees, which if you remember back here, I figured that out. So this corner, this triangle of my roof is what this is right here. And I did all this math already and it will be the exact same when I flip flop it over here. So I just have to change the angles. And this side I have not done yet in here. These will actually carry from one hip to the other. And I've dropped down this rafter so that my two by four purlin will go right over top of it. So these compound angles are a little bit tough. Got the chop saw out and uh, you just gotta take them nice and slow. So all of the math that I had just done was all based on the center line of these hip rafters from the wall. So what I gotta do is, we've got this three quarter. I'm just gonna mark it at three quarter and plane it back this way, plane it back this way, and this is where my rafters are gonna die in, right here. And then we'll use the math up here. We've got our, our snap line, this is the top plane line from our our two foot eight rise down to our fascia line and uh, really the math is working out quite well. Well there you go it's a good example of how if you take the time to do the math things should work and that's constant and if you put everything where you're supposed to go should straighten everything out as well. We'll get some hangers over here. We remember we did that ledger uh, two by 12 over here. That's what everything's fastening into. So we got nice and solid. We'll get some hangers. And then you can see here how this two by 12 is dropped. That's for a two by four plane to go over top of it. We'll hit some 60s straight down and then it will plane right into our hip rafters right where we made our marks. So the major takeaway from this video, guys, is use math, especially when making complicated dimensional cuts on a project like a hip porch. And um, we're going to go ahead and break this up because the next video will all be about, I guess, the finishes. We'll sheet it. We'll get the steel on it. We'll do the trim details. But it's just too much to put all into one video without sacrificing. And I figure you guys would rather have more content than not enough. So we'll look for you on the next video. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that thumbs up. Share these videos with your friends. Um, I really appreciate the support and that definitely gives me the encouragement to keep going but for now we'll catch you guys on the next video and stay tuned later